Onboarding new teammates into a project can be tedious, especially when it comes to getting them set up with the right combinations of tools, configurations, and permissions. Making use of pre-configured development environments can definitely make this go so much easier. So in this video, you'll see how to pair together tools like Dev containers and Stripe sandboxes to create pre-configured development environments to help get your teammates up and running so much faster. To create a new sandbox for the onboarding environment, hit the account picker on the top left and choose sandboxes. Next, we'll hit the create button. And here, we'll give the sandbox a name. In this case, it'll be onboarding. Now we'll go ahead and create the sandbox. Each sandbox has its own set of API keys for the account. If we hit on the developers menu and then select API keys, we can see the ones that are assigned to this particular sandbox. Make sure you copy these keys into your application's configuration before you start using it. Next, you should populate the sandbox environment with some data for the application to use. In this case, I'm just going to add a product in the dashboard. I'll give it a description, a name, I'll select an image, I'll set its tax code, I'll make this a one off payment, I'll give it a price and then I'll add the product. You could also make use of one of those API keys you saw in the previous page, along with one of the Stripe SDKs to populate the sandbox environment with some dummy data. Over in Visual Studio, we'll go ahead and create the dev container now. First, we'll need to make sure that the dev containers extension is installed, as well as Docker or another container runtime like Podman. Inside of the root folder of our application, we'll create a folder. We'll call it dot dev container. And inside of that folder, we'll create a file called devcontainer.json. In this file is where we'll store most of the configuration for our dev container environment. I'll go ahead and paste in some basic properties. All I'm doing is giving our dev container a name and also letting it know what extensions for Visual Studio Code should be installed within the environment. Next, I'll go ahead and create a compose.yaml file. This is one of the options we have to define what are the services that we want to have available whenever the environment spins up. If we open up the program.cs file, we'll notice that this application only has a few dependencies. It needs some configuration information about Stripe, and it also needs a connection to Redis. So that means that whenever this environment spins up, we need to have that information available for it. I'll go ahead and paste the services our application needs inside of this compose file. The first service in this file represents our application, and what it's doing is mounting it inside of a container and it's using a .NET image since this is a .NET based application. The second service sets up that Redis server using the Redis stack image. It defines what ports need to be exposed for us to access the service, as well as an environment available that sets up the password for the Redis server. Also notice, if we head back to the root folder, we actually have a .env file, an environment variable file. I'll open the sample one just to show you what it kind of looks like. A .env file sets up some key value pairs that you could use to store configuration values. So inside of this one, we're setting up the secret key, webhook key, and also some connection information for Redis. This file will get picked up automatically by the compose.yaml file whenever the dev container environment spins up. So this is a good option if you ever need to store local secrets that your application can make use of. Now, back over in the dev container.json file, I'll paste in some additional configuration. And this sets up the dev container to use that compose.yaml file that we just created. On line 8, you'll see that we're specifying the name of the service that we'll be developing inside of. In this case, it's the products API service. And also on line 11, some port forwarding rules are set up. So now this will specify the port that our service will be available on on localhost whenever our debugging session starts. With that being set up, I'm going to open the command palette inside of Visual Studio Code. And I'm going to look for reopen in container. Now, when I execute this command, what will happen is the dev container extension for VS Code is going to look at our configuration and it's going to build out a container for us using those settings. Notice inside of the terminal, we're automatically dropped into that slash workspace folder. And also, if we type the who am I command, this session is logged in with a VS Code user. And this is because this workspace is now running inside of a container and not on the local machine. If I head over to the solution explorer, I'm going to try and run and debug this application. And what you should notice is that we have access to all of the typical debugging tools. Now, if I make a request over to this API, you should notice that I'm able to hit my breakpoints. I can expect the values of variables. I have my watches, my stack trace, 
all the other things that I would usually expect as I'm debugging locally. But instead, I'm now running inside of a container. Let's go ahead and let this run. And there you can see I got a successful response back. Now, let's stop this debugging session. I'm going to open up the command palette again, and this time I'm going to go to reopen folder locally. Now, since this application is using Stripe, wouldn't it be nice if the Stripe CLI was already installed and set up to be used? Well, it's not available yet, but one of the things that we can do is run a shell script. Now, I've gone ahead and pasted some commands that I got from the Stripe CLI documentation. Next, I head back over to the devcontainer.json file, and I'm going to add some additional configuration. Now, what this post create command does is let our dev container know that we want it to run the script after the container environment has been created. What I'll do now, I'll go back to the command prompt. And instead of just reopening container, I want to rebuild and reopen in container because I want the extension to use this script that we just created to set up the environment. Now, as you can see, it's running the script and it's installing the Stripe CLI into the environment. Now that that's done, I can close this up. And if I type Stripe, now I should have access to the Stripe CLI that I can use within this container environment as I continue to build out my application. Now with that step being done, we now have a fully set up environment with configuration, source code, a Redis resource, and everything we need to get started with building out additional features. Now all we need to do is check this into source control and any of our new engineers could pull this down and get started in just a few minutes. Hopefully at this point, you've seen how using Stripe sandboxes along with some other tools can be a great option for creating development spaces that can be used for onboarding, for testing, and even for creating experiments. Now, if you want to learn more about sandboxes, definitely make sure you check out some of the documentation on the Stripe docs, as well as some of the other videos we have here on the Stripe Developers YouTube channel.